Although Red Bull wasn't the first energy drink ever made, it certainly was the first to become a worldwide sensation. The company is now worth almost $18 billion, but when it was first founded, no one assumed it would even be financially viable as no one was drinking energy drinks. But the founder, who was originally a duck farmer, believed through everyone's doubts that people wanted a drink that would give them the kick they needed to get through the day, and therefore, Red Bull was born. Although he would soon change the world by creating the most popular energy drinks on the planet, Chalio Uvija's early life was far from what you might expect for a future billionaire. His exact birth date is unknown, but we know he was born sometime between 1922 and 1932 in central Thailand. His parents were poor Chinese immigrants who raised ducks and traded fruit to put a roof over their heads and food on the table. Without a formal education, Chalio had few options for employment and worked for his parents raising ducks for some time until he decided to try his luck in the big city and moved to Bangkok to become a pharmaceutical salesman. Chalio did well, and with the help of his brother, who owned a pharmacy, he started his own company called TCP, which made and sold antibiotics. Interestingly, his time learning about, manufacturing, and selling pharmaceuticals through the 1960s actually gave him the knowledge he would need to create Red Bull. It's important to note that Chalio wasn't technically the first man to create an energy drink. In fact, at the time, there were a few no-name brands that contained caffeine and one popular Japanese option. However, the Japanese version, Lipovitan D, tasted like medicine and wasn't really enjoyable. So he decided to create a caffeinated energy drink that people would actually want to drink. In 1976, he officially created his first energy tonic drink by what he called Divine Inspiration. It was sweet, berry flavored, had a cool logo, and even an interesting name. He called it Krating Daying, which means red water buffalo. The marketing plan was simple. He promoted the drink to laborers who needed energy and focused to get their jobs done and kept the price low so they could afford it. At the time, it was quite a bold move to market to laborers as opposed to the wealthy, as many believed they didn't have money to spend. But Chalio believed in his tactic and created advertisements that showed blue-collar workers sitting in their work clothes on the ground enjoying the energy drink. And at only 30 cents per drink, many didn't believe that Kreting Daing would be a financial success as thousands would need to be sold to truly make money. At first, they were right. Sales were initially unimpressive, but within just one year, sales were booming, and it seemed that workers all over Thailand were drinking Kreting and loving its flavor and effects. With a bit more income, Chalio also marketed towards the masses by sponsoring popular Muay Thai fighters, showing that Kray Ting could energize you enough to knock someone out. By the 1980s, Kray Ting went international around various countries in Asia, and it was safe to say that people were loving Chalio's creation. In 1984, things changed for Chalio Uvedia when he partnered with Austrian businessman Dietrich Mateschitz. Dietrich Mateschitz was born on May 20, 1944, in rural Austria. But from a young age, he wanted to get out and live in the nearby city of Vienna. As a young man, Dietrich couldn't really decide on what he wanted to do. He worked as a ski instructor and was slowly getting a degree, although he changed his major and even university so many times that it took him 10 years to complete. But with a degree in commerce and marketing under his belt, Dietrich began making his way into the business world. During the 1970s, he worked for several companies marketing detergents, toothpaste, and cosmetics. While he was working for the German company, Blindex, he was on a business trip in Thailand when he tried Krating for the first time. And when just one bottle got rid of his jet lag, he realized it was something seriously special. But it took him years to actually contact Chalio. He continued working in Europe though he was miserable at his job. And when he read an article that said the company that created Japan's energy drink Lipova 10D was the country's biggest taxpayer, he decided it was time to get involved in the energy drink market. Matasheets met with Chalio and told him his grand plan to bring Krating to Europe as there was nothing similar available in the Western world. Although Chalio wasn't immediately convinced of the idea, he caved with persuasion and the two businessmen formed a partnership. 
They each invested $500,000 for 49% of the company, and Chalim, Chalio's son, received the final 2%. This half a million dollars would eventually turn both men into billionaires. But before that could happen, they needed to come up with a business plan and marketing strategy. For three years, Matashitz and Chalio worked to create the perfect energy drink for Europeans. But their first few tries were extremely unsuccessful. Focus groups didn't like the taste of Chalio's popular creatine drink as they had different preferences than those in Asia. In fact, it wasn't just the taste they didn't like, it was also the brand, logo, and even the idea of the drink. Matashitz was facing disaster, but the ambitious man decided to go ahead with this plan hoping and believing that the drink would actually be successful if he could just get it into the market. He set up offices and distribution centers, but things didn't go as planned. Throughout Europe, in order to sell food or beverage, it first needs to be approved by the ministries of health in each country. And many of Kratin's ingredients, including taurine, gruculonolactone, and magnesium carbonate, had never been used or approved before. Austria's health administration was the first to approve the beverage in 1987, and they finally launched the energy drink, but with a Western twist. They changed the name and taste to suit the preferences of Europeans, and Red Bull was born. Instead of medicine bottles like Chalio used in Thailand, the drink came in a uniquely shaped blue and silver can and created a new logo. Red Bull gives you wings. And then they added carbonation in order to appeal to those who typically drink soft drinks for their daily energy kick. But even with all these preparations and adjustments, Europeans were simply not interested in Red Bull. Sales the first few years were abysmal, and not only did it look like the two would never make their money back, but they also had to continue to funnel funds into the company to try to keep it afloat. Although Chalio had seen immense success by marketing his energy drink to the working class in Thailand, Matashitz thought it was best to go in the complete opposite direction in Europe. He wanted Red Bull to be considered a premium drink, and instead of keeping it cheap, he set it at three times the price as other sodas on the shelves. And in order to provide his target audience with proof that the best of the best drink Red Bull, he decided to offer sponsorships to athletes to promote what the energy drink could do. Dietrich Mateschitz was always interested in extreme sports, so instead of going for a football star, his first sponsored athlete was beloved Austrian Formula One racer Gerard Berger. From there, the idea of working with extreme athletes took off, and they began to sponsor big names in paragliding, mountain biking, snowboarding, and hang gliding. It's important to note that while many consider Dietrich's marketing strategy completely genius, it was actually Chalio who first thought to sponsor athletes in Thailand more than 15 years earlier. But Dietrich noticed that young adults wanted to emulate these athletes and turned his attention towards marketing to young professionals and college students. They would even give out free cases to local startups and college campuses to get the population hooked on Red Bull. Dietrich also paid for Red Bull parties on college campuses when students started using it as a mixer for their alcoholic drinks. And he paid young college students to drive around Red Bull cars with big cans on them, giving away the drinks for free. If you were in a public space in the 2000s, you might remember getting free cans on the beach or at a party. The strategy of giving away free Red Bull was genius because once you had one, you wanted another. And these multiple strategies worked. Red Bull was finally flying off the shelves, even at the higher price point. They launched in the USA in 1996 with immediate success and sold their billionth can. Over the next 15 years, Red Bull continued to grow and the company pushed itself constantly to stay at the top of the market, even when other energy drinks tried to jump on the bandwagon. Over the years, Red Bull has faced many ups and downs, and while there are now more than enough energy drink options to choose from, Red Bull is still considered one of the best and most popular on the planet. Since Chalio and Dietrich started selling Red Bull, they have sold over 75 billion cans. But that doesn't mean that Red Bull has slowed down its dedication to selling more and more cans every day. In fact, the company reportedly spends between 30% and 35% of its annual revenue on marketing. Today, Red Bull continues to sponsor athletes, and they have more than 1,200 professional performers on their payroll to promote the drink. Also, they host events, 
competitions, and showcase of extreme sports all over the world. Although Chalio Uvidya passed away in 2012, he left his son the empire and fortune of $20 billion, and his partner Dietrich Medeschitz was worth an incredible $24.5 billion when he died in 2022. And they were each the third richest men in their countries. It's safe to say that the young son of immigrant duck farmers in Thailand did seriously well for himself. More than that, he essentially created the entire energy drink market, which is now a multi-billion dollar industry. In other words, he changed the world with just one drink. Hungry for another fascinating business story? Click on the following video to hear the crazy story about the poor boy who wanted to save for medical studies and invented Subway.